Hey guys, Josh MUFC here. Um, there's been some news. The 22-23 uh, season fixture list has been dropped. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick run through of the um, the Manchester United fixtures and how much points based on last year's sort of team, uh, how much points I think they're going to accrue. So we'll get right into it. Um, a couple of really tough months. Um, obviously, there's a gap in the middle of the year for the uh, the World Cup, so that that's going to congest fixtures pretty much both sides of it. Um, and we also have uh, you know, Nations League uh, internationals. We have all the European competitions, domestic cups. But I'm focusing on the Premier League for for this video alone. So. <clears throat> In the first month, in August, um, United are playing Brighton, Brentford, Liverpool, Southampton and Leicester. Um, the opening game at Old Trafford, Brighton, they are at home, away against Brentford, at home against Liverpool, and the next two games against Southampton and Leicester, Leicester, Leicester they are both away. Um, out of those, I think United are reasonably looking at about 10 points. Um should be fairly easy wins over um, Brentford and Southampton. Brighton always provides a bit of problem. Um, Leicester, you, know, you never know what version of them are going to rock up on any given day. So, yeah, I think in August we're looking at about 10 points. Um, in September, we have Arsenal at home. We play Crystal Palace away, and we also face Leeds at home. Now, Leeds are usually pretty 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 crap when it comes to traveling so granted jesse marsh i think will have them playing better football but i think they're still too raw and once their transfers are done um you might see a little, little bit better performances from them but out of that i think united will probably beat Leeds, draw with palace and i struggle to see them winning against arsenal um again i'm just basing this off sort of last year's form um, because obviously no major transfers have been done for the majority of clubs, so it's hard to say what sort of teams are going to take shape. When we get a little bit closer to uh, the kickoff date, when the transfer window's more solidified and pre-season's been done, I might, I might touch on this again and maybe give it another look over. Anyway, um, October is a very difficult month. Uh, there are six Premier League games, so that's pretty much you know a game every four or five days in between Europe and all the other all the other domestic cups. So that's a very, very hectic month. It's going to require a lot of uh, rotation from all teams. And the five subs rule is going to be very, very important for every club in this league. So the, the order is as follows for United. City away, Everton away. Then they play Newcastle and Tottenham at home. Chelsea away and West Ham away. Now, I <laughs> I can't see United really knocking off City, Chelsea. Uh, might might maybe do it against Tottenham, but I think there's only... You've got to be looking at either six or nine points there. Um, or maybe a draw against Everton. And maybe it depends on what, what the Newcastle is looking like as well. But yeah, I think six or nine points, anywhere in between those would be reasonable for a very busy October. That's when... I think a lot of teams will start to sort of see where they're going to end up in the table because that's where whoever has the the deeper squads and the best quality are going to sort of rise to the top. And that's when the sort of the tight race will start to really heat up. Um, so yeah, six six to nine points in October. I think the wins will come against West Ham and Tottenham. Not, not Tottenham. West Ham and Newcastle or. Um, a draw against Newcastle, win against Everton. Like I said, it can vary anywhere between those points. Then you move on to November, which, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they have only two fixtures, and they're both away, Villa and Fulham. I think that's an easy six points. And then we move into the World Cup time, um, which go, I think it's you know, 30, 40 odd days, something like that. And that brings us to the back end of December. Um, United are at home to Nottingham Forest. They're away to Wolves. I think four points. I think it'll be a fairly easy win against Nottingham. I don't think Nottingham Forest are going to be... Uh, well, again, it depends on transfers, but I don't think they're going to really do, you know, Brentford or a Leeds and sort of 
you know, push up and, and give give good account of themselves. They're they've got they got a good they've got a solid team. They were there amongst it at the top of the championship and they did very well to get through the playoffs. But I can't see them posing too much of a threat. Maybe the odd upset against a, a bigger bigger rival. But um, yeah, December I see United winning against Nottingham and probably a draw against Wolves because that's away at the Molyneux and everyone knows that's a very difficult place to travel and, and get points. Um, Wolves don't really concede a lot, they don't score a lot, so it's it's very in the middle for it. Um, we move on to January now. Now this is... It's a difficult one. It's got Bournemouth at home, City at home, and Arsenal away. Now, yet again, I think there's going to be a, probably a draw with Arsenal. I United's recent form against them hasn't been great. I don't think Oli beat them. I, and they didn't beat them this year. Maybe a couple of draws. I, I, my memory is not that good on it. Um, but anyway, I've said four points for December. Um, I think that's fairly fairly straightforward. You move into the new year, into January. Um, there is Bournemouth at home, City at home, and Arsenal away. Now, I've put down four points on there. Um, it's, it's hard because by that point, we should see enough of Ten Hag's um, tactics and shapes and play style coming through where they've been playing it long enough to, I guess, almost become second nature. Even though it's a high tempo and high intensity, I think sort of by that turn of the year, we should be seeing what United are going to look like full time. Um, but given that, I think they'll beat Bournemouth probably pretty comfortably. Bournemouth, they I don't see them getting out of the relegation zone pretty much at all during next season, to be completely honest with you. Uh, yeah, lose to City, draw to Arsenal. So that moves us into February, uh, where United start off. They play at home to Palace, away to Leeds, and two home games back-to-back, Leicester and Brentford. I've put down seven points here because I think there is... A draw in the Leicester game, a or possibly a loss. Actually, it's 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 a difficult one because United was so so terrible in in playing teams they should have beaten quite easily. So it'll either be seven, possibly ten points, or even nine. It could be three wins and a loss, a surprise loss. But again, depending on what Leicester shows up on the day. That's what will dictate their points. But I think seven points out of February, moving into another busy month and another hectic month, hectic month in April. Uh, starts off at St. James Park, Newcastle away. Then they're at home to Everton, away to Nottingham, at home to Chelsea, and then away to Spurs and home to Villa. Another six games in a month. Um, that is basically the pointy end of the season. There's going to be uh, uh, domestic cup finals. There's going to be the, the back end of the Europa League and the Champions League. Uh, depends on who's in the conference, but it'll be interesting to see. Um, but I've put down 13 points for that month. I think it'll be a lot better. Uh, I think there will be wins to Newcastle and Everton because Everton don't really travel well. I'm not sure what sort of shape the Lampard squad's going to take, so we'll find out. Um, a win against Nottingham. I think there'll be a couple of draws against Spurs and Chelsea. Possibly a draw against Villa, but yet again, this is all speculation right now. Which moves into the back end of the season, and it's West Ham away at the start of May. Wolves at home, and then Bournemouth away. And to close out the season, United have Fulham at home. I think there is a win and three draws, possibly, or two wins and a draw. I've said seven points because I think the wins will come against Bournemouth and Fulham, and it should they should do the double over them in the league. Um, and I think it'll be a draw against either Wolves or West Ham, um, likely against Wolves because they don't tend to get flogged too much by us, um, and I, which would leave us with a, with a West Ham victory. Um, I'm pretty pretty confident that's. Based off, you know, again, based on last year's um, form from United, 
that is pretty much it. Um, that brings the grand total to between 61 and 67 points uh, for United at the end of the year. There will be a small improvement, I think. But again, this is all speculation. The fix fixture list has dropped and we can only see what happens in the transfer window. I'll revisit it probably after game week two or three when the transfer window finally closes for good and maybe give another prediction. But yeah, that's where I stand. I think United will get about 61 points, probably finish just outside the top four again. I think it'll be another Europa League year, unless something better happens. So anyway, that's it for me. Um, leave your comments below. Tell me what your predictions will be for United in the coming year. I think it's a fifth or sixth finish again, probably with Wolves. I think Arsenal will get better, but we'll see how we go. Um, but anyway, thanks for tuning in, and that's just a short one from me today, and we'll catch you next time. Like, share, subscribe, and go and like and share and subscribe over at Talk Football 92 I am a panellist over there, and I'll see you on the flip side. Bye, guys.